Hello everyone, welcome to the second vlog for our pediatrics. Alright guys, I know the video just started, I am editing it right now, but I just wanted to interject real quick at the beginning of the vlog to say that at the end of the vlog, I'm going to be giving you guys the most important advice someone could give you at the beginning of medical school. So if you are in the first two years of medical school, stay tuned or at least don't skip that part of the video. If any part you skip, don't skip that part because I think I'm going to give you guys the best advice someone could possibly give you that'll set you guys up for success in your school exams and as importantly, the board exam, which you will have to take at the end of the two years, which is step one. So don't skip that part, skip the rest. Or don't skip it, I guess, I don't know, but don't skip that part. And right now I'm on my way to work in the morning. These past few weeks have been very hectic, it's been very busy. And on the bright side, it's the first few weeks that I've actually begun feeling like a medical student because I've been seeing patients independently and working up their diagnosis, the treatment plan, and obviously running it by the attending. And a lot of times I would come up with the treatment plan and run it by the attending and he would say that's correct. So it feels very good. It feels like a legitimizing experience, feeling like a real medical student. I've also been doing UWorld every single day. That hasn't changed to be honest. So it has been a roller coaster ride with UWorld. That hasn't changed to be honest. Some days you'll get 40% of the questions right, some days you'll get 50%, some days you'll get 70%. It's really hectic, it's really chaotic, and you don't know how to feel about your progress. Because the thing with UWorld and any question bank is that a lot of times, it, because it's random, you don't know what set of questions you're getting. If you're getting a lot of questions on areas you're strong in, you're going to score very well. And then maybe the next time you do a block, you'll get a majority of questions that test you on concepts you don't know very well. Which is why a lot of people say, especially with UWorld, don't mind the percentage as much. Just focus on learning whatever it is that you got wrong. So I've been doing that. So yesterday I got 70% of my questions right and I, I was feeling very hyped, which was really good. Because I think on that block, the average was I think 50 something percent. So I was 20% above that and I was like, you know what? Wow, I'm making a lot of progress. And then this morning, I did another block and I got the first 10 questions right and I'm like, wow, this is going to be another high scoring block. And then I proceeded to get 15 questions wrong in a row. So that was quite humbling and it kind of recalibrated my confidence. And it's actually good to have moments like that so you don't overestimate how prepared you are. And with UWorld specifically, your obsession should only be with improving and not with the scores you get because it really is a learning tool. So that is how things have been for me so far. I've been going to the clinic, I've been seeing patients independently, I've been doing their entire write-up, doing all of the charting, a lot of the diagnosis and the treatment, and then obviously running it by the attending. That has just been my day in the life. I also went to the Harry Potter shop in Chicago which recently opened, so now I'm going to cue the videos that I took for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed watching those videos. I am just five minutes away from the hospital and I'll have to get going, but the pop-up store was really nice. There were a lot of items and they were all very overpriced, but everyone was buying it because there's a lot of hype around Harry Potter. Anyways, I'm gonna get going to my rotation and once I'm done, I'll see you guys on the drive back and I'll fill you guys in on what I did. 
and what the rest of the week is going to look like for us. Anyways, I'll see you guys and bye. Blah, 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 blah. Hello guys, I hope everyone is doing well. Our shift is finally over. I stayed an hour extra because I had to do charting for a bunch of patients, but it was a pack today. I saw a lot of people. And again, I'm starting to see these patients independently. And a lot of times I'm writing up what my diagnosis is or what my treatment plan is. And today I got it right for a few of the patients. Today, I think I just saw standard patients. One of them was actually kind of funny. I saw a patient who, I think it was a 12 year old boy. And his issue was that he had, I don't even think he knew what was happening with him. He's like, I've had a headache and a fever. I'm like, well, how long has it been? He's like, oh, I don't know. And then he's like, oh, talk to my mom on the phone. And then I talked to the mom. She's like, he has a history of headaches. I'm like, okay, well, when was the last headache you had? He's like, I don't know. I'm like, okay, do you take any medications? Like, I don't know the names of them. So it was just so hectic. He didn't know anything, but he knew he was sick. I think he was just in it to get a slip to not go to school for two days. But it was kind of funny. Talk to the mom over the phone and she didn't know what was going on. The more you expose yourself to different scenarios, the more you learn how to behave and how to act. And the more confidence it gives you, the more your repertoire of encounters is filled with diverse scenarios and encounters. I'm going home now. I have a bunch of flashcards I have to do for pediatrics because after internal medicine and surgery, I think pediatrics makes up the biggest chunk on step two. So I wanna make sure I learn pediatrics very well. I'm making a lot of flashcards and I'm doing them. I'm making the flashcards based on my weaknesses, which is what I would advise everyone to do. Do not go get someone else's deck. If you're short on time, then I guess that makes sense. But even then, you shouldn't be short on time. If you have time dedicated for studying, which you should have, that time should be spent on creating flashcards based on your weaknesses or doing questions and then making flashcards. Because when you make flashcards based on your weaknesses, you're fine tuning your entire studying experience to address your weaknesses, as opposed to studying a bunch of things that are not necessarily high yield for you specifically. All right, guys, we have a very exciting Saturday for us. I woke up literally an hour ago. I woke up, I washed my face. I started doing UWorld. I think I got th to two, three questions. And then I got a message from someone saying if I'm available for a soccer tournament, which is really competitive. I think the prize pool is 2000 $500 and I said yeah for sure sign me up and I woke up an hour ago I haven't even had breakfast yet I think all I've had to eat this morning is my coffee I quickly got to packing I have my soccer shoes my turf and also my cleats I don't know what kind of a tournament it is um, I don't know if it's gonna be turf if it's gonna be grass if it's gonna be indoor outdoor nothing I just said give me a location and I'll be there and apparently it's very competitive the guy said there's gonna be some division one players and the rest of the players are division one potentials. I don't know these people either at all. They just messaged me, hey, can you play? And I said, yeah, just give me a location. So I'm stepping outside my comfort zone. I've played competitively since a young age, so I, I think I'll be fine. But again, division one is another level. Um, and I haven't played soccer com competitively in 10 years. So anyways, I am on the drive right now. I'll pick back up when I arrive there. I'll show you guys the place and hopefully we have a lot of fun times together. As you guys saw in one of the videos, 
there was a fight that broke out between two players. I think it's because one person got tripped and then the other person who tripped him stepped over him. Then I think someone spat on another player and that kept on escalating and escalating to the point where they were fighting and they had to both get red cards. I found it so embarrassing where you have when you have grown men that have full-time jobs, hopefully they have full-time jobs, fighting over a soccer game, really? Even if you're a professional, how do you lose control of yourself so easily? And then one of the guys was like, oh, they're fighting because this tournament is for money. And I'm like, what's, what does that mean? <laughs> it's, it's for money and what? I don't know. They, they, a lot of times these guys, they think it's masculine if you stand up for yourself and you fight back and stuff like that. But if you can be manipulated emotionally that easily, like someone could work you up to have control over your emotions that easily. I think that is anything but masculinity. Like I think masculinity is when you have full control over everything about yourself. You can't get taken advantage of in any way. It's very funny when you go to soccer tournaments and you have men who think to be masculine is to fight back and to fight and to stand up for yourself. You have to stand up for yourself, but this isn't standing up for yourself. When you don't know how to de-escalate situations, when you don't know how to control your emotions, when you don't know how to have respect for people, that is anything but masculine. It's a very caveman kind of thinking, but you know, it is what it is. Um, but it was a good tournament, although we lost every game because our team had no chemistry and no defense. Um, it was good, you know, I had cardio, um, I met new people, I did my Anki cards while I was driving, you know, I listened to a lecture in the car as well, and I have a drive home, so I'm gonna, after I turn this off, I'm gonna start listening to another lecture, take advantage of my time, maybe even call my parents, talk to them, I haven't heard their voice in I think in one day, so I have to call my parents as well, see how they're doing. All right guys, I promise you this looks and tastes a lot better in real life. I don't know why the color is so dark in the video, but it looks a lot better, it smells really good. I have peppers, onions, um, mushrooms, and like I think it's like coconut flavor, so it's very good. So I'm gonna eat that meal. It is currently 6.35, I haven't had my first meal yet, so I'm gonna eat that, watch some trashy TV show like Trailer Park Boys and afterwards, hopefully if I have energy, I'll do some questions and if not, I'll make up for it tomorrow. Alright guys, so this is how it looks. I think it looks a lot better with flash on, but we got the food ready, we got Trailer Park Boys ready, we're gonna finish this and then hopefully do some studying. I'll see you guys. Alright, welcome to the last part of the video. So in this segment, we're gonna talk about a very important topic, which is how to study first two years of medical school. So as you know, as a medical student, there are, throughout the first two years of medical school, there's gonna be an ungodly number of exams, quizzes, tests that you will have to do. And obviously, since they're school exams, they're gonna revolve around your school curriculum. And naturally, there's gonna be areas in which the school curriculum overlaps with um, board exam material and there's going to be areas in which it doesn't overlap and that's perfectly fine because the purpose of med medical school is not necessarily to prepare you for board exams. What should you do as a medical student that after your first two years are done you could easily transition to taking your board exam without much of a delay. So first things first as a medical student you need to acknowledge that the most high yield resource for step one specifically for step one the most high yield resource is going to be the first a textbook there's not a there's not going to be a single question that you're going to see on step one that isn't mentioned in the first a textbook unless if it's an experimental question in which case that's not going to count towards your grade even in my step one exam that i took in december i didn't even come across a single question that i was like you know what i'm absolutely clueless you know i could take an educated guess because I treated the first a textbook as my Bible. So what can you do as a medical student? Whatever you learn in medical school, whatever you learn in your lectures, in your tutorials, when you go home to review that topic, after reviewing it, you also go review that topic in the first a textbook. And you, and you do this throughout the first two years of medical school, right? So if in lecture today, you guys learned about, I don't know, congestive heart failure or England or hernias or whatever topic that you guys learned about, when you go home and you want to learn about diuretics, whatever, you also open up that portion of first aid that covers diuretics, that covers congestive heart failure, or that covers cranial nerves, that whatever the topic you learned, right? And if you do this throughout first year, throughout second year, when the first two years are over, 
you're gonna have covered everything high yield for the step one exam as well. Treat the first day textbook as your Bible. If you go to class, you learn a topic, you open up first day textbook the same day, the day after, and you say, okay, you know what, what did my lectures cover in this first day textbook and what did they miss? And whatever they missed, make sure you learn that as well. You don't wanna wait until the first two years are over. And then when you wanna start taking MBME exams, you realize, oh wow, I'm scoring so poorly because there are all these gaps in my knowledge that I didn't um, prepare for. Anyways, that does it for this week's pediatric vlog. Thank you for joining along with me. I'm, I'm gonna be finishing pediatrics next week and then we're off to family medicine. So the next video you guys see of me will either be family medicine episode number one or it'll be the rotation interview for pediatrics. So anyways, I hope you guys are well. Make sure to keep doing your flashcards. Definitely keep up with UWorld. I don't know how to sign out as always, so I'm just gonna...